I've got a crazy story that involves me, Billie Eilish, the Chicago Cubs, and even Google, and it's all totally true. Here's the story of how my song went number one. I'm Josh, AKA Super Duper, and you're watching The Super Duper Show. This tale begins with a little website called Pitchfork. I was listening to their new music recommendations. Like a real man. There's always something weird or unique on Pitchfork, so it's a great place for sampling, kind of like a digital crate. Found a song on there called Murmurs by 100 Waters. Beautiful song, go check it out. I downloaded it, chopped it up, made a song called Angela. And it was also around the time of my wife's birthday. So, included some voice memos from some game nights, some memories we shared, and I posted on SoundCloud cloud for her birthday. I got her a real gift too. I'm not an idiot. So I uploaded the song on a Friday, didn't tell anyone, and then Sunday rolls around, a blog called Hilly Dilly posted the song. This blog is a big deal. Hilly Dilly is credited for discovering Billie Eilish. This was a great resource back in the day for a rs devout music fans. Awesome exposure. One week later, this song hits number one on this online chart called Hype Machine. And if you don't know what Hype Machine is, well, well, sit on down, Junior. Grandpa's gonna tell you. Hype Machine was essentially the front page of music in the 2010s. It was like musical Reddit. Blogs would post about a song, the song would get populated on the Hype Machine chart, and then users could upvote it. And the more upvotes it got, the higher it went up on the chart, and so on and so forth. Honestly, it was a very cool way to see a song reacting in real time. There's no video, it was just the song. People listened, voted yay or nay. Just to clarify your honor, I had no label, I had no manager, I had no PR, I had no one. I was alone. Social media wasn't helping anybody at that time either. We were just posting pictures of super filtered avocado toast. We used to be a proper country. After the song went number one, I had multiple emails from managers and labels. I even got to do a proper release of the song with Warner Brothers. From there, I got a booking agent, played some amazing venues, just really, really cool. Later that year, the Chicago Cubs were in the World Series and one of the pitchers used my song, Angela, as his walk-up music. Crazy. And to put a little cherry on top, Google used the song in an ad. So, I mean, it just kind of kept going and going and going. Who cares? Okay, I promise I'm not trying to brag. For real, for real. I just wanted to give all those details to hopefully encourage a creative out there who might be watching Give them some hope and some inspiration. So here's the headline. Post, release, publish, upload, whatever. Just put your stuff out there. I had zero clue that that song was gonna connect with so many people. I mean, I like the song, but if I'm being 100% honest, I had no inkling that it was gonna change my career forever. All right, let's have the talk. The talk, talk, the talk, the talk. Perfecting that thing that you're creating could be preventing you from having a whole new life and the freedom to create more. So you gotta let go or you might miss out, okay? There is definitely someone out there right now who has a hit song or a best-selling book or a viral video on their hard drive and they won't put it out because the thought of failure or being too vulnerable, too cringe, is too much to handle. Hey, I get it, but the only way you're gonna fail is if you don't try. What was that? I'm so sorry. Creations were meant to be shared. It's the only way you'll grow as a creative. To be clear, I'm only talking to the creatives who either haven't started or are like stuck in like the writing loop. There's definitely a time and a place for curation. If you're an artist and you're writing 30 songs for your next EP and you only put out five, great. You're an awesome editor. You're only putting out the best of the best. And if you're thinking right now, yo, super cool story and all, but no way that happens to me. Let me tell you about an electronic artist from Arizona named Kareem Ali. He just started putting music out in 2019. By the middle of 2020, this dude had already released 79 songs. One song in particular called Night Echoes was picked up by Pitchfork and called Best New Track. That's a huge deal for a song that was self-released. That same year, he put out his 157th song, and it's called Lesser Speeds. It's so beautiful, so simple and hypnotic. It's one of his best, in my opinion. Go check it out, put it on on a night drive, go pick up some donuts. It's gonna be amazing. Okay, supposedly there are like five other projects or monikers this man does, so who knows how much music this dude has cooked up. I mean, he's literally playing the ground is lava, and the lava is a social life and breathing. So this is the insane end of the spectrum, but I'm not totally mad about the approach, to be honest. Essentially, you're buying more lottery tickets. The more music you put out, the greater your chances are of success. 
and you don't always know when you have a winning lottery ticket. I definitely didn't know. And I'm sorry, Kareem, but you do have some flops in between your bops. You need to leave. But you probably wouldn't have written your bops if it weren't for the flops. You feel me? It's called trial and error, people. Look it up. All right, I'll wrap up this little tantrum. If you got a gift that God gave you, put it out in the world. Make it a better place. The power is yours. That's all I've got for today, but there's more on the way. So subscribe, stay tuned, and stay super duper. Peace, guys.